Hi, this is Steve Steele, and today I'm going to show you the top 10 new features of Vienna Ensemble Pro 6. 10. Let's look at the preferences. We have a couple of new items. One is auto save time interval. As you know, if you are coupled to Vienna Ensemble Pro Server from your DAW, when you save in your DAW, it pulls all the information from Vienna Ensemble and saves it in its file. So the DAW is saving the state of all the instances. But if you decouple, when you hit save, it will not. And then in that case, you need to save these instances yourself. So Luckily, there's an autosave feature, and there is a time interval, how often you want it saved. There is a default MIDI channel. If you have a lot of multi-temporal instruments, all is good. If not, one is a good choice. And we're going to see a little bit more about this later. Next, snap instances when loading old projects. So when you load an old project, say from version 5 into version 6, it's going to snap it as a tab. We're going to see tabs in a moment, so you'll see what that is. And you can turn that on or off, and you'll see what snap means. And although default thread count is not a new feature, we are going to see it in instances, so remember that. Nine. Tabs. I have an instance from version five. And I'm going to drag and drop it into this server interface. And it's gonna load all these instruments up. In six, this blue window that you see that used to be the instance is now the server. So this is the server window. We no longer have a server that just lists instances. This is the server. And the instances are tabs. Now, about snap and unsnap, we can take this instance and remove it from the tab. And you can put it in different spaces if you like. The tab is still going to remain there because this is like a list in the old server, but you can do what you want with the instance or you can put it back. Also under the view menu, same thing. You can name tabs. Here's the indicator that this instance is connected, which it's not at the moment. This is the preserve button, the couple to couple, and delete instance. One more thing. You can also set color. I'm going to keep this one at blue, and you can also sort alphabetically. I have one more. This is an instance and what it's going to do is load it into a new tab. So these are two separate instances. I'm going to name it. And I will give this one a different color. Eight. Auto raise. So in my DAW, I have not yet connected. Under this button is a new button called Auto Raise Instance. And you can check or uncheck these for each instance, however you would like to do them. So let me connect. So I'm preserved, 
Here's my raise function, but I'm not going to do that yet. I'm going to connect to the second one. There's the color that I made in the tab. I'm preserved and I can raise, but I'm not going to yet. So if I open the plugin from my DAW, I get auto raise. That is the auto raise feature. Seven, six. We've got some great ways to organize the interface now. The first is folders. And there's three ways to get to it. Down here in the insert menu, right click anywhere in the interface. And under channel. I'll go ahead and just select it there. Put the folder there. I'm going to rubber band select all these wind instruments. And here's how you put them in the folder. Once they're selected, click and hold on the title of the instrument next to the folder. Bring it over towards this orange line that's going to show up. And at the bottom of the orange line, look at that now. It's going to lift up. When it does that, drop. Let go of the mouse. And now all of these are in this folder. You see a gray bar here and under here. You can color it by choosing change color. All right, so now we have all our tracks in a folder, but we can do more. Let's make a group. If you look at the bottom of the mixer, there is a new item called group. Again, I'm going to rubber band select all my instruments plus the folder that I just put it into. I'm going to left click. Choose Create, and I get a number one on all of these. Now I'm going to right-click, choose Group Settings. I can name this group. Let's name it Wins. And I can choose the items that I want the group to be able to control globally. All right, so now... All the faders move together. This is now a VCA fader. When you mute the folder, it'll bypass all of the instruments. I'm going to do one last thing. Just going to name the folder. Five. Unified channel model. In the insert menu, you notice when we looked at insert new plugin, we had things that weren't plugins. They looked more like buses, right? Let me insert an instrument. I'll pull it down to the end. Let's say I didn't want to do that. I can delete the instrument. I'll delete Mirror Pro as well. And now I have an empty 
channel. But this can be a bus now. Put a reverb on it. I'll give it a name. I'm going to go to my sends and choose bus and there it is, it shows up. And because I've grouped these, they load on every channel. They all become pre-faders and I can turn them up all together at the same time. And that signal will flow through here. Let's try that out. Set preferences for instances. So we have a new feature where each instance can customize its thread count. It overrides the global setting. And you can optimize your setup accordingly. Three. Disable. If you're not using some instruments, let's say this room tone, I could mute it. That makes it quiet, but it doesn't stop using CPU resources. But I can disable it. And I can go much further than that. I can disable whole groups. And it takes a lot of pressure off the CPUs and unloads out of RAM. Or I can turn them all back on. Two. Mixer functions. If I want consecutive MIDI tracks, I hold down the option key, choose wherever I want to start, and I get consecutive MIDI tracks. The instrument can be bypassed without having to open it up. You can also bypass, delete, or change. In fact, I can change this channel into a bus. I can do whatever I want with this channel. I can also change it into an input. So again, that's part of the unified channel model. Any channel we can, can be changed right here. So let's say that I wanted this comp after the EQ, but before the reverb. Well, I could pull this reverb down and then move this over, but there's a quicker way now. Grab the plugin, move it over. Notice it creates an orange box around that plugin. Now that plugin, but in the middle, it creates an orange line. Drop it there, and the plugin is inserted in between the two. Mirror Pro can be bypassed. It can also be deleted for other items. This inline feature. I can send the output of this instrument's Mirror Pro sound to a bus or to a totally different output. Why don't we try that? So I'm going to send that to 3-4. Now, I need to go to my DAW. 
Create an aux track. All right, we should hear both. Turn this down, It'll be dry. I'll turn this back up, that's wet. So here at the bottom, left hand side, there is a show hide for the mixer. So you can hide everything but the faders, the mutant solos, the name of the track, and the MIDI port and MIDI channel. One. So, just being able to get around quickly. Just like that. So, I'll be seeing you guys in a couple days with the new video. I got a request to do a Vienna Ensemble contact Vienna Instruments optimization video. It's something that I promised I would do a while back and I'm going to go ahead and get that done. Thank you guys very much for watching this and uh, I will see you soon.